Baptist Association family, 
uh, truly to our ushers and our nurses and auxiliary, amen, who is responsible for these two nights of virtual revival, amen, to our senior president, Sister Doris Threat, to our junior president, Ms. Myla Davis, amen, to our supervisor, to our nurses, our sister Catherine Thomas, and to all of you, my brothers and sisters, who are part of Easton, we thank God for this day that he has made, and we shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. We thank you so much for watching over us throughout the course of this day. We thank you for bringing us to this moment of worship. We praise you, O oh God. We worship you. Thank you for who you are and all the great things that you continue to bring about in our lives. We pray for the mighty movement of your Holy Ghost, O oh God, to simply have his way. Allow your spirit to fall fresh upon your manservant, Pastor Rogers, on tonight, that your word will go forth with power and conviction, that individuals will not only be revived, but also be saved and delivered and set free. So we thank you in advance as we invoke your spirit to reign over this house called Mount Horeb that has been made for your dwelling. These things we ask now in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ, we do pray. Let every heart say Amen. Our scripture tonight, God's plan for salvation, Romans chapter number 10. God's plan for salvation, beginning at verse number 1. It reads, Brother, in my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. But they be women of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law, the man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your heart, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Let's praise God for the word of God on tonight, the first nine verses of Romans chapter number 10. The word of God is blessed in our hearing. Let us now hear from the representative of our ushers and our nurses. Amen. She serves as the area vice president of Queens County from the St. Albans Baptist Church in St. Albans, New York. Amen. Sister Regina Romaine, let us receive her at this time. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Lord. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Galatians 5.25 we are here one more night at the Mount Hor Baptist Church in Corona, Queens. Amen. Amen. Moderator Reverend Gilbert Pickett Sr. is the pastor. Those of you who are on Facebook and Zoom, we say welcome to the EBA Ushers and Nurses Crusade for Christ. With Sister Dodge Thread is our president of the Senior Ushers and Nurses and Sister Myla Davis is our junior president. We welcome you on this day, the second night of our revival, to give God praises unto the Lord for our God has brought us through to see this day to receive, to rejoice and be revived. Welcome Reverend Williams and the First Baptist Church. Amen. We're so glad to see you here. We know you have a word from on high, Reverend Williams. We know that. And we praise you and thank you for the invitation. Praise ye the Lord. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sister Regina. We thank God for your faithfulness. Amen. We know that there are many and have been many 
have been watching and supporting uh, this crusade for Christ. Amen. This is, amen, the new normal uh, as far as worship, and I'm honored, amen, not only to be the moderator of the Eastern Baptist Association, but also have the opportunity to continue to bring Eastern, amen, in front of you as far as praise, worship, and preaching is concerned. We are praying for the churches of our association. Uh, we know that the struggle is and has been real. Uh, we know that we have lost many persons, amen, we're going to continue to pray for these churches and their families, amen, but we know that in the midst of it all, our God is still good, and our God is still worthy to be praised. Thank you so much for your support financially on last night, amen, I heard from the trustees, I heard that, amen, those who are watching, amen, did well as far as supporting to do that again on tonight, especially those who are watching for the very first time. We are asking each and every one who can to share a $20 offering, amen, on tonight in support of this crusade for Christ, amen. We ask that you give electronically, amen, through the Give a Fly app. If you go to Eastern Baptist Association on Give a Fly, uh, you will see an envelope that says ushers and nurses. Uh, you could give there as far as that is concerned, just one offering on tonight. Or you could give through Cash App, dollar sign EBA1921, dollar sign EBA1921. Let us be in support financially as well as spiritually, amen, for this two nights of crusade. Dr. Franco Harris blessed us on last night. He challenged us to serve even in the midst a pandemic. He preached, he sung, he danced, he skipped, he hopped, amen. The Lord used him uh, in a mighty and awesome way. And we thank God for the gift, amen, to the body of Christ and the person of Dr. Harris. And we know that we're in for another blessing on tonight because Pastor Roger Williams is somebody's preacher. He is a native of Louisiana, amen. And we thank God for the 21 years of faithfulness and service uh, that he has rendered to the first Church of Glen Cove. He's a great spirit. He's a father. He's a friend. He's a teacher. He's a preacher. Par excellence. And so you at the right place at the right time, of course, serving the right God. Amen. In terms of worshiping with us all tonight. So after Pastor Robert Wilson would have rendered, amen, the sermonic solo selection of his choosing, the next voice you shall hear will be that of the preacher of the hour in the person of Pastor Roger Williams, First Baptist Church. Glen Cove. Come on, family. Let's lift up our voices wherever you are and say, God bless. Pass the way.
Let the church say amen. amen. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Let's talk to the Lord together as we offer ourselves unto the Lord for what he has prepared for us. Dear God, our Father, we bless you and we thank you tonight for being God and God all by yourself. We ask now, dear God, that as we come to the responsibility that we have now to take up from the table that you have prepared, the bread of life, let our hearts and minds be open to the power and the will of the Holy Ghost. Speak to our hearts now, dear God. Let the ears of our hearts be open. Let everyone who is listening through live through Zoom, now, God, find that sanctified place for what you intend to do tonight. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. If God has been good to you, let me hear you say amen. 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 To our great God, the Father, who is our creator, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is our recreator, and to the Holy Ghost, who keeps us, guides us, and teaches us, and to uh, the moderator of this great association, uh, Reverend Gilbert Pickett, and the pastor of this wonderful church, Mount Horror Church here in Corona, Queens, and of course, to uh, the ushers and auxiliary, ushers auxiliary and nurses auxiliary, who have uh, sponsored this crusade revival and thought it uh, not robbery to involve me in sharing with you. I am honored and feel so privileged and blessed uh, to be a part of what the Holy Spirit is doing these two nights. I certainly enjoyed hearing Franco last night, what a blessing he was. And uh, I am looking forward to <clears throat> the Lord continuing to do great work, not only through our but through our churches. And to my dear sister, for your words tonight, God bless you to Sister Brett, who has produced great work over many years with our EBA ushers. Uh, I want to commend all of you tonight who are watching via Zoom and Facebook Live for your leadership in this association. And uh, I thank God once again for being a part of this wonderful opportunity. Now, I am going to demonstrate why I am not intentional revival, but I'm going to do what I've come to do in order that we have what the Lord wants us to have. And I want to thank my church uh, family who are sharing tonight, both by Facebook Live and by my associate minister who's here tonight, uh, Minister Carol Buchanan and her husband, David Buchanan. Uh, they thought it not wrong to come and be with me tonight, share with me uh, as we are uh, uh, putting the responsibility in front of us tonight. Uh, let me go right to the responsibility that I have. I want to once again thank uh, Moderator Pickett. I know that I'm so proud of him and thank God for him and opening up the doors of this great church that we might tonight uh, partake in this responsibility. Uh, I just want to say to you, uh, uh, moderator Pink, the Lord is with you. The Lord has uh, used you to guide us through this great moment in history. Uh, and, uh, I know that he's going to continue to give you the wisdom, and we will be praying for you, you as we continue to go forward and press our way toward the mark of the high pride of the calling in God. Amen. You, I want to bring up a word here tonight from the book of Mark, chapter 16. Mark, chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, in verse 1, I'm beginning there, NIV version, Mark chapter 16, verse 1, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on, the first day of the week, just as they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, 
had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. I want to lift up these words right here. And he has risen. He is not here. And then listen to these words. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. I want to use for a subject tonight, on our way to Galilee. Let me take a moment and make clear what I mean when I say Galilee. Obviously, geographically, it is a region, the upper region of Israel, that region that housed the little small windswept hamlet called Nazareth where Jesus was reared and heard the voice of calling that brought him from the carpenter shop to the corner, letting everyone know about the good news of the kingdom. Yeah. But Galilee for us tonight is the place where we meet Jesus. Right. It is the place tonight where we connect with our Lord and we are with him in his resurrection power. We have been through pandemic and pandemonium. We have been through peril and many problems. Our nation has been called upon to work together to find a way to make a virus dormant and not give it power to continue to spread and take the lives that it has taken over 160,000 and counting. We have been called again as a nation to once again look at ourselves and decide what it is that we want to do about the racial discrimination and strife that has continued to dog America. Yeah. Our churches have been called at this time to make sure that we are ready to preach the gospel and to bear the cross of Jesus who said, if any man or woman will come after me, let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me. Galilee, my brothers and sisters, is the place where we will receive the meat and the strength and the substance that we need to go forward to another venture in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me make it clear, Galilee is not the final destination, but it is the destiny and the destination that will prepare us for the greater things on ahead. My brothers and sisters, we talk about heaven and going there one day. And yes, one day I want to go to heaven. I want to see Jesus. But I still want to make sure that while I'm in the flesh, I am a profitable asset for the Lord's business on earth. For I want to be one of those agents on earth that says what Jesus said in the prayer that he taught his disciples. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I know that if I meet my Lord in Galilee and I'm with him in his resurrection power, I can learn what it is that he wishes for me to do and for you to do so that if I am a part of his will being done on earth as it is in heaven, one day when I get to heaven, I will surely hear servant, well done. Yeah. Let, us, let us tabernacle in the text for just a moment and I... I'm a conversational brother when it comes to preaching, so just, just have a conversation with me. Uh, I, I, I just want to allow us to just walk through the pathway of the text and pick up a few things that I believe that will be beneficial to our spiritual journey here tonight. It is, of course, in on the heels and in the wake of that tragic Friday that all of us know about. Yeah. That Friday, you remember it? When our Lord was sentenced to a death of execution put upon him by the Roman Empire. Yes, your Lord and our Lord, according to the historical evidence that we have, was seen as an insurrectionist, as someone who was stirring up the people, according to Luke 23, and of course a man who was a threat to the Roman Empire because he spoke of a kingdom 
And if his kingdom was to rise, it was an implication that no other kingdom could stand alongside of it. Yeah. Our Lord brought to his cross, climbed Golgotha, and died on that Friday. I remember uh, Pastor Pickett, C.A.W. Clark said that on that day that our Lord died, that midnight came during midday. Yeah. And the heaven cried tears as if it was in mourning and in shame. Yeah. And as our Lord died at Calvary, those few that stood around the foot of the cross saw what they thought was the only hope of Israel, to have the iron foot of oppression lifted off of its neck and allow them to live under the sovereignty and the freedom of Almighty God again. Yeah. But as he died, put in a borrowed tomb given to him by Joseph of Arimathea, sadness, hopelessness, and, and a sense of no direction began to fill the hearts of those that followed our Lord Jesus Christ. But, but then Sunday morning came. Yeah. And as the purpling dawn began to overtake the dark skies of Saturday night, that Sunday morning, those women that we just named started to make their way to the tomb where our Lord was buried. As they arrived and they were on their way, they wanted to give him a proper anointing of his body because the Sabbath had come upon them and they were not able to do as they had wished to do to take care of his body and give him the proper burial. But as they were on their way, they realized that an obstacle was in the way. A situation might be there that might hinder their progress. They learned in their own selves that there is a salt stone there that seals the tomb. And how will we get to the body? Because the stone is there. And, and who will move the stone away from us? But as they drew close and came with an eyesight of the tomb, they realized, my brothers and sisters, that the stone had already been rolled away. Yeah. I, I, on our way to Galilee here tonight, I want to remind you, as we are dealing with the trials and the troubles of this pandemic, the trials and troubles within our own immediate space, I want you to sit down and take some time or maybe stand up and lift your hands where you are and give God some praise because some stones have already been rolled away in our lives. I know that the darkness seems to try to eclipse the sun of hope. I know that there are times when depression seems to be the blanket, that the only blanket you can find in the nighttime hour when you're trying to get some sleep and some rest. But I'm here to tell you tonight, if you just take some time and sit back and think about it, God has been good to you. God has been wonderful to you. God has been a sovereign God. He's been a healing God. He's been a good God. And God has rolled away some stones in your life. In fact, some stones he's rolled away. You're not even aware yet how God has already opened the door for you. How God has already lifted you up to the high dimension that you have already been destined for. You just got to open your eyes and say, God, thank you, because I know even though it doesn't look good now, I know that you've already rolled away the stone. And I want to say here tonight to all of us who are watching, I understand that there is now a movement within our churches. How do we deal with the content of the conflict that is going on in our nation? That's still right now in America. We are dealing with the legacy of slavery and second class citizenship in this America, in this country, i.e. Jim Crow and de facto segregation across the North. And many of us have talked about the social gospel and, and talked about the gospel, but I'm a firm believer that the gospel is not truly the gospel until it is social, that it moves into the lanes, into the streets, and into the areas of where we are in America. The gospel speaks to our lives that there is a Jesus that not only can move within the inner sanctum of our lives, but he is a Jesus that will give us the power to stand up against those powers that be to demonstrate our humanity in the world. Yeah. My brother and my sister, how do we look at it? We look at it, there are some stones that have already been rolled away. 
There are people who have gone before us and who have, who have died with their blood as an evidence that they've given their lives as a deposit for our freedom. All we need to do is step up in power and step up in faith and step up in confidence and say, Lord, we are ready now to be soldiers in order that justice might be established and that which is not just will be brought asunder. The stone has already been rolled away by Frederick Douglass. The stone has already been rolled away by Fannie Lou Hamer. Yeah. Ella Baker has already rolled away the stone. Yeah. Those abolitionists from the north have already rolled away the stone. Yeah. Yes, a man by the name of Brown, a preacher, a white man out of Ohio in, 19, in 1837 said, I will give my life for the eradication of slavery. And we sing about his body, oh, uh, Brown's lie a moldering in the grave he has rolled away the stone yes Martin Luther King has rolled away the stone yes that's right Malcolm X has rolled away the stone and all we do is realize that when the stone has been rolled away it is not an empty tomb that is presented to us but an open tomb this was not empty look in if you will, if you don't mind. It's right there in the text, as we shall see in another passage that records the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. When they looked in, they saw the cloth that wrapped about his head and his body, so it was not an empty tomb. The stone that had been rolled away gives us the message to that the stone that had been rolled away presents an open tomb for us. Meaning that we can travel through death that we can go through the valley of the shadow of death. That we can go into the teeth of the enemy. But because we've got Jesus and his blood on our side, we're able to survive and come out victorious in his name. When these, when these women came to the tomb, they saw an open tomb. Where death now had had a back door installed. And here tonight, that ought to be the faith that we ought to have, that as we face death in a different way every day, my brothers and sisters, you and I don't have to worry because we are under the blood of Jesus Christ by living in his purpose and depending on his power. And when we are living in his purpose and depending on his power, even though death is all around us, we can walk right round death and through death to the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. When they looked in, they saw a man sitting there. The tomb was not empty. It was open. And as the man stood there all in white, gleaming in white, his witness began to burst from his lips. And he said there to them, the Jesus of Nazareth that you're looking for, he is risen. And notice something in the text that says, he is not here. Moderator Pickett, I love this part because what it says here is that the presence and the power of Jesus was declared by his absence. In other words, it was not where he was, it was where he was not that was made clear for the women on that day. And I think it's important for us to understand in our understanding of the resurrected Jesus, it's not about where he is all the time. But we need to, in these perilous times, recognize where he is not. And the tomb, the place of death, the place of finality, the place where hopelessness abides, Jesus is not there. Because he went into the teeth of hopelessness. He went into the mouth and the lion's bite of that which says all hope is gone. And he defeated it on its own turf. Put it upon the foreign power of the grave, grabbed the keys of heaven and hell, and came out victorious by the power of his father. My brother and sister, he is not in the loneliness. He is not in the hopelessness. He is not in the despair. He has defeated your despair. He has defeated your hopelessness. He has defeated the disappointment that people have upon your life. He has defeated that today, and you need to rise up and say, thank I don't have to wallow in my loneliness. I don't have to wallow down in all of my depression because the Almighty God, He is risen. He is not there. Right, 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 it's time for us. Stand up. Look the devil in his
his face. Sometimes the devil might be right in your house. But look the devil in your face. <laughs> sometimes the devil might be on your job. And oh Lord, I, I hate to say this, but sometimes the devil might be right in the church. But look the devil in the face and say, devil, I will not be where the defeated are. I will not be brought down and depressed because my Lord is risen. He is not here. Our Lord now is declared to not be there. The messenger, with gleaming in white, says he's not here. Don't from here, he's not. He's not in these pieces and places that you left. and broke you up. He's in fact. Don't come back to this place again. Don't deal with this location because sometimes we keep going back. Is trying to squeeze toothpaste out of a tube that no longer has the content. How many of us are in relationships like that? How many of us are in circumstances where you still try to get something out of something that was never produced in the something that you keep going to? My mother used to say, you can't get blood out of a turnip. Every time I would ask her for money, Mom, can I have $5? Can I have $3? And she would say, boy, I ain't got no money. Money don't grow on trees and blood don't come from a turnip. Some of us need to get up from the broken places where the Lord has vacated and realize that the season is over. The situation is done. Stick a fork in it and turn your head in another direction. The messenger said, Go on to Galilee, and there you will see him. You'll see him in his resurrection power. So tonight, I say to you here tonight, EPA, and all of the churches that are represented here today, let's get up yeah. from the tomb, yeah. and let's make our way to Galilee. Yeah. Because when we get there, we'll see the nail-scarred hands. Yeah. But the nail-scarred hands won't have the nails in them no more. When we get there, we'll see the nail-scarred feet. But the nail-scarred feet will not have the nails in them anymore. We'll see the marks on his brow where they, they, they jammed the crown, the thorny crown, upon his head. But my brother and sister, that thorny crown will not be upon his head. The crowns of every nation will be upon his head. No, not Hitler. No, not Mussolini. No, not Edward VII. No, not Donald Trump. No, they will not be the final say, nor the ruler. But it is Jesus who will have the crowns of the universe on his head. So when we get to Galilee tonight, let us go there and be ready to worship him. Worship him because he's been so good. Worship him because he pulled us up from the bar and the pit. Worship him because he's been with us every day and every hour. Worship him because he's victorious over hell, death, and the grave. Worship him because he's been on your side when the enemy tried to lay out a trap for you in the road. Thanks be to God. He's not in the tomb. He's in Galilee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My heart sings glad music because my Jesus lives again. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. Talks with me. Along life's narrow way. Let's go to Galilee. Because when we pick ourselves up out from where we are, and we meet him in Galilee tonight, he's going to refresh us when we worship him. He's going to adorn us with new clothing and a new understanding. Not so we can rest from our labor. It's not time for that yet. The church got work to do. So let's get ready to do that work. But let's get up from where you are and get to Galilee. He's waiting. He's waiting.
giving their lives over to Jesus Christ. We offer you salvation. We offer you Christ Jesus. And we offer you the opportunity to give your life to Christ by simply repeating this prayer and say, Lord, save my soul. I am a sinner undone. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe, Jesus, that you died for my sins. I believe, Jesus, that God your Father raised you from the dead with all power in your hands for my salvation. I want to accept you as Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Take charge of my life. I submit myself to you. If you repeated that prayer and you believe that today, we thank God for your salvation. And when you get the opportunity, the first opportunity that's afforded unto you, we challenge you to find a ministry of church to work out your soul salvation. That's what this crusade is about. Amen. That's what we are about as far as Christians in terms of telling everybody about somebody who can save anybody. And his name is Jesus. So we thank God for the presentation of Christ, a living Savior, on tonight. As truly, truly, we thank God. Amen. For Pastor Roger Williams, First Baptist Church of Glen Cove. Before we go any further, amen, Sister Marmaine is going to come back with some further information, and then we are going to have an intercessory prayer and a blessed benediction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are on our way to Galilee. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Williams. We know you had a word for us, and my God, was that a word. Thank you, First Baptist family. Thank you, Pastor Williams, for accepting that invitation to be our preacher on tonight. You have filled our souls with the word of God. And again, Reverend Harris, we say thank you for on last night. 
Thank you all for tuning in again tonight on Facebook and Zoom. We pray that on both nights your hearts and souls have been revived. Moderator Pickett, we thank you again for opening your doors for in such time as these. You are a blessing to our body of ushers and nurses of the Baptist Association, and we, we thank you. Thank you, Reverend Wilson, for your musical selections. Job well done. Thank you all again who has helped with the technical aspects of this program. Sister Alfreda Singleton, who serves as our trustee for the EBA. We, the ushers, thank you for everything you do for us and our brother, Avery Zell, who is one of our Jews who serves as our marshal. We love you. We love you, Brother Avery. Thank you again, Reverend Morgan, who is always, always willing and able to assist with the EBA ushers. Especially thank you for working with Reverend Anthony Brown on our beautiful flyer and getting out our, our information on Facebook. Thank you, Reverend Brown, for your faithful work you do for our ushers and nurses. We needed that flyer and you did it. Thank you. We are praying for you and your family. We love you for all you are to us. Thank you to the Vice Presidents of our, our Eastern Baptist Association, Ushers and Nurses. We want to thank our Vice President at large, Sister Valeria Grange. We are continuously praying for you and your family. Thank you to Bernie's, our Vice President of of, of Kings County, Sister Bernice Jones, who assists, who assisted me as chairperson. Thank you to our Vice President of Nassau County, Sister Denise Pierce. You are, you always are praying for us. Thank you, Vice President Sister Louise Lucas of Suffolk County, who keeps real. Thank you, Sister Catherine Thomas, our Director of Nurses, for making sure the nurses were updated. Our fish and thank you to our official cabinet of the East Baptist Association, ushers and nurses. To you, our president, Sister Doris Threat, and our junior president, Sister Marla Davis, thank you for your help and your support and allowing us to carry this through. If if I left any one out, please blame it on my head and not my heart. I believe if our president sister threat was here, she would say, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all. My, I've learned to depend on his word. God bless you all and good night. Before I, I take my seat, I would, I would like for each person who is on Zoom to please remain on Zoom after the benediction and our prayer. Sister Myla Davis has something that she would like to share with you. God bless you all and have a good night. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sister Gina. As we thank God again for your faithfulness. As we are preparing, amen, for intercessory prayer, uh, we are asking our association to please pray for Pastor Joe Brown and family as he lost a son uh, in a tragic uh, car accident. Uh, we are asking that you pray for Pastor Larry Shell of the New Hope Baptist Church far back away as his mother, Mother Shell, went home be with the Lord at a tender age of 96 years old. Amen. We are asking that you continue to pray for Bishop Winfrey J. Pippen, First Baptist Church in Deer Park. We ask that you continue to uplift Pastor Emeritus Robert R. Burkett. We ask that you pray for Pastor Larry Washington and family. We receive word that one of his sons was stricken and, and sick comatose state uh, that you pray for his family uh, as well and there's so many others uh, pastors and church laity uh, we are 
we're going through what we're going through in terms of who we have lost, of course, to COVID-19, who we have lost to cancer, who we have lost to cardiac arrest, who we have lost to car crashes. Amen. It seems as if it is not one thing, then it's a whole bunch of others. But again, we know that life, amen, that death is a part of life. Amen. And in the midst of this life, we will have our shares of trials and tribulations. Amen. There was only one person who walked this earth that was sinless. And if Jesus was here, he would tell you that even though I was sinless, amen, I did not, amen, or was not rather exempt from trials and tribulations, troubles and sorrows. Uh, so let us pray for this world at large. Let us continue to pray for one another. I'm asking Reverend Carol Buchanan, amen, of the First Baptist Church of Glen Cole. She's going to lead us to the throne of grace and mercy at this time.
all of you who were with us by Zoom, Facebook Live. Uh, we thank God for the moderator once again. Let's spread blessings upon him and his church. And for Sister Brett, thank you for the ushers and uh, nurses auxiliary. Thank all of you for allowing this pastor preacher to come and be with you tonight in this way. And to all of the other officers of our ushers and our nurses auxiliary, we pray blessings on you and peace. Let us now receive the benediction as we close on this evening. Now, may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth and forever. Let us all respond by saying, Amen.